In this video, we're going to solve the divection equation numerically. We are going to study the classic upwind scheme and learn conditions to have a consistent and stable scheme. If you want to know why the amplitude of the solution changes through time, or why the solution is not stable in certain conditions, then this class is for you. I hope you like it. The divection or transport problem with constant coefficient is represented by the following partial differential equation. U is the divected quantity and A the divection speed. In our numerical simulations, the divection speed is constant and equal to 0.8. The initial condition U0 is a Gaussian distribution normalized by its value in x equals 0, as shown in this equation. For this problem, we have periodic boundary conditions. Let's show now that the divection problem has a unique solution and that it can be obtained by the method of characteristics. Consider the differential of u. We call the characteristic curve gamma the curve where dx dt equals a. Therefore, the transport equation can be written as follows. This shows that the quantity u is conserved along the characteristic curve gamma and that the solution is of the following form. This equation represents a function which propagates the initial solution at a fixed speed a. In our case, the analytical solution reads like this. The graphic of the solution at time t is deduced from the graphic of the initial data u0 by translation of length at along the abscissa axis. The first image shows the temporal evolution of the exact solution and the second image shows the characteristic curves. Note that the characteristic curves are plotted in the plane Tx. Through this graphic, we have the position of our initial curve at every time t. In this first round of simulations, we will study the classic upwind scheme. The mesh size delta x is defined according to the number of discretization points nx in the domain length Lx. The time step delta t must be compatible with the choice of delta x and the speed a in order to keep the numerical scheme stable, as we're going to discuss later. Let's talk about consistency and precision now. A numerical scheme is consistent if the discrete solution converges towards the continuous solution when delta t and delta x tend to zero. In other words, the truncation error must become zero when the mesh spacing tends to zero. In order to compute the truncation error, we use Taylor's expansion in space and time. Using these results in the definition of the truncation error, we obtain that the truncation error tends to zero when delta t and delta x tends to zero, evolving in order one in time as well as in space. The numerical scheme is therefore consistent with a precision of order one. Let's talk now about stability. A numerical solution method is said to be stable if it does not magnify the errors that appear in the course of the numerical solution process. The most widely used approach to studying stability of numerical schemes is the von Neumann's method, which is based on the decomposition of the errors into Fourier series. In this method, we have to define the function v and its Fourier transform. Applying the Fourier transformation to the discretized scheme and knowing this special identity, we obtain the following equation. We are interested in the amplification coefficient once its modulus must be inferior or equal to 1 to achieve stability. Replacing a times delta t over delta x by sigma in this equation, we obtain this following expression. And finally, Given that the cosine function is bounded, we have that sigma times sigma minus 1 must be less than or equal to 0. Take some time to process these steps. We have just shown the courant friedrich liouis condition, the CFL condition. Thus, the upwind scheme is stable only if the time step and the grid size are such that a times delta t over delta x is less than or equal to 1. The Lex equivalence theorem 
states that for a consistent finite difference method, for a well-posed linear initial value problem, the method is convergent if and only if it is stable. So, for the upwind scheme, according to Lack's equivalence theorem, if the CFL condition is verified, the scheme will be convergent, since it is a linear problem, well-posed and at the same time consistent and stable. On the other hand, if the CFL condition is not satisfied, the scheme will no longer be stable. Let's see if this is the case. We are going to perform simulations for three different time steps and therefore three CFL numbers. Here are the parameters we picked. Writing the upwind scheme in Python is straightforward. In this program, we import some basic libraries, define some parameters, solve for the discretized equation, and plot the results. Let's see if it works. It is running. Great! Since the problem is periodic, I prefer to write the Python code using the following short form, with the command row. Let's now compare both numerical and exact solutions after one turnaround. As expected, we obtain a stable solution if the CFL is less than or equal to 1 and an unstable solution if it's greater than 1. For simulation with CFL equals 0 0.8, the solution is stable but it attenuates over time. If CFL equals 1, the amplitude of the Gaussian distribution is constant over time and is equal to its initial value. In the case where CFL equals 1.2, the amplitude increases and the calculation diverges. Now let's refine the mesh, keeping the CFL number equal to 0 0.8. We note that the solution computed with the mesh comprising 201 points is much closer to the exact solution than the one calculated with 101 points. It's obvious that the mesh refinement improved the precision of the computation. The following table shows a comparison between the maximum deviation of the solutions at each point in space with respect to the L2 norm. Note, however, that the trade-off to obtain a more precise solution is to use more grid points and more iterations, therefore more computational resources. Great! In this lecture, we discussed convergence issues and we understood why a computation can explode. To understand why the amplitude of the solution decreases through time using the upwind scheme, I invite you to watch the next video. Keep tuned!